Hello, it's week 17 of season 6 of The Andy Griffith Show. This week's episode title is The Return of Barney Fife. Barney, it's good to see you return as a guest star in this episode. What's going on this week? May Day Union High School is having a reunion for the class of 1948. That's the class that Andy and I were in. Andy and Helen and Aunt D and another classmate named Floss are helping plan it and put it together. A lot of folks are coming back including Sharon Destain, who's a lady that Andy used to date in high school. And I'm coming too. I'm driving down from Raleigh on Friday. And when I arrive, Andy welcomes me and he asks me whether my car is a 1961. And I say, no, it's a 60 with a 61 grill. I was going to die a new one, but I figured, what the heck, let somebody else take the depreciation. The first six years on a car or nerder. And you and Andy go in the courthouse and you reminisce about old times. And you tell Andy you're no longer with the state traffic division of the state police. You're with the fingerprint division. Yeah, and then I ask how Andy is. And he says, sane, can't complain. And I say, I heard you got a new deputy. And he says, yeah, a guy named Warren Ferguson. And then I say, so, the big reunion is tomorrow night, huh? A lot of the gang going to be there? And he says, yeah. And I say, well, it's nice to see the old gang once in a while. Of course, you wouldn't want to see him every day. But, you know, once every few years, just to compare notes and see how they're doing. And I ask whether Phil Malou is coming. And he says they haven't heard from her yet. He says she was pretty fond of me. And I say she was crazy about me as what she was. And the tailors put you up in their guest room for the night, and you unpack and pack out, pass out some gifts that you brought. Yeah, I gave Ulti one of the official ink tads, and we use in the fingerprint department. And I give Aunt D some imported lace handkerchiefs, and I give Andy a tie clip. And after supper, Andy and I go out in the front porch, and he says, So, things are really swinging for you up in Raleigh. And I say, oh yeah, you know you want to pop up there sometime, and you could stay right there at the Y with me as my guest. I got a corner room now. And I say that for a single guy in a big city, it's just go, go, go. I say it's too dead. It looks like Delma Lou may not come. She would have gotten a kick out of how I've come up in the world. And then he asks whether you're still sweet on her, and you say, oh no, no. Once it's gone, you can't get it back. Still, sometimes a, a man wonders. I say I'm looking forward to tomorrow night. And then Andy and I sing the school song together. And then Helen comes out, and she says they just got a telegram that Thelma Lou is coming. And I jump up and I say she is. Well, ain't that something? How about that, Ange? She is coming. Old Phil is coming. Oh, that anything she heard I was going to be here. And the next day, Andy and I get dressed up in our suits, and we drive down to the reunion. There's a band, and dancing, and refreshments, and everything. And I go and talk to a few of my old teachers. I tell them, of course, it's a whole new world up there. It's so different, it's hard to explain. It's all automation, and electronics, and computers. And then Thelma Lou walks in, and you walk over to her, and she says, you look wonderful, Barney. And you each say how much you thought of each other, and you all start dancing together. And I apologize for not writing, but I say I've been so dizzy with my career. And she says I do look different, very successful. And then she goes off to register. And when she comes back, she brings a guy with her, and she introduces him as her husband of six weeks, Gerald Whitfield. So I go off and drink some punch. And Andy comes over and asks me whether I'm okay. And I say I'm getting along just fine. Sure, it was a shock. So what? It wasn't the first one in my life, and it won't be the last. That's the way life is. Rough life. You can't cry about it. And then you say Thelma Lou was the only girl you ever loved, or will love. You had big plans with her, but you'll get over it. And then another girl from our class named Nettie Albright comes over, and she says she heard how successful I was. But she always knew that would happen. And I was her idol. So I ask her to dance. And she says yes. And I say, yeah, yeah. There's a lot been going on up there in Raleigh. Of course, it's a big town. A lot of wild life. 
you know, it's just go, go, go. And then Indy and I drive home. And he says in the car that it's something about Thelma Lou being married. But then I say, did you get a good look at that Nanny Albright? I think she's had it for me for a long time. She's a nice kid. You know, she lives right there in Asheville. It's just a few hours from Raleigh. And Andy says I should drive up there sometime. And I say I will. And then we go in the house. We'll see you next week for episode 18.